Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are going to be evolving another custom solar system from birth to death. I saw you guys really, really enjoyed the first little series we did um, on this and you guys absolutely smashed it with the support and the likes. And yeah, really, really appreciate it, guys. Really, really glad you enjoyed it. And a lot of you said, do another one. And yeah, I was thinking to myself as well, this was a lot of fun. We've got to do another one. So without further ado, here we are. I've already set up a uh, new proto star. So I've used Spicer as a template here. So this one's got 10 masses of sun right out of the box. Obviously, I've made it a lot smaller than its current size. I mean, if we was to compare it with the current Spicer, obviously, it's um, a lot smaller than it is at the moment. So eventually, it's going to become this blue uh, giant here. And obviously, eventually, that would all evolve into like a red super giant or something along the lines of that. So, yeah. Now, obviously, we need to add some planets around here. So what we're going to do is we'll make a massive planetary disk. We'll use the uh, we'll use an asteroid belt as a example, and then we'll spawn in some random objects and stuff and see how we sort of go. So we need to add a ring. I think we have to press this button now to get the custom stuff up. So we'll go with a really, really nice, huge, huge uh, radius of ring here. So we'll go, over, we'll go one moon distance, I guess. So have it really, really close. And then we'll go out to about um, 100 AU. I think that'll be a nice uh, distance to fit a disc around. Uh, we'll just go over a nice white ring. Uh, add the ring. Okay, so how are we looking? Okay, so there's our sort of uh, ring around our star. So obviously it's got a nice load of particles in there. We'll add two sets in. So there we go. Right, so here's our sort of planetary disc. This is where all the planets will form. And eventually we'll have our solar system built from all of this material here. So, actually one thing we could do as well, uh, if we just click play, obviously that's all going to start just uh, orbiting the star nicely. And then this is all of our proto-planets and all of the material that will eventually create our planets. So, where are we? So, what I want to do is I want to try the uh, material button. What if I just spray random material in here? I just want to see sort of... I just want to shoot just a bunch of material around and see if it eventually gets picked up by the star. I haven't really used... I didn't use this in the last one, but I thought I'd give it a shot and just see... Let's just throw loads and loads of material. Well, okay, the hydrogen does look really cool. And then our iron is the last one. So we've just got a bunch of material flying around the system now. I mean, that does look awesome. <laughs> but obviously, eventually, this is all just going to uh, hopefully... I mean, I don't want it just to get slingshotted out. That's not... I don't want that to happen. So, I mean, I need to try and get it to uh, orbit the star. And hopefully, it'll get picked up by some of the objects eventually. So maybe if I just fire it all in one direction, hopefully, it'll just orbit around the star. And eventually, it'll just all go around. I mean, I don't really experiment with the um, material tool much. I mean, I'm quite new to using this. So how's that all looking? Okay, so hopefully, this all starts to orbit the star. But it looks like some of it's all coming back around. So as we can see, we've got all fresh material orbiting around the uh, star now. Okay, that does look awesome. Got some cool visual effects in this version of this series. Look at all this. Though. This, is, this is really, really cool. So... Yeah, just shoot more of each material. So there's a plenty of mass in all of the particles here. So we're just going to spray it everywhere. I mean, it's a it's an early solar system. There's going to be material flying everywhere. I mean, we are going a little extreme, granted. I mean, it does look a little crazy. Obviously, it wouldn't look this pretty in real life, maybe. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Actually, who knows? So let's just let that all just sort itself out for the time being. Okay, that does look gorgeous. Look at all this material. So our new solar system has just been born. Got our star already formed. There's loads and loads of material flying around the Earth star. So now what we're going to do is... We're going to spawn in our first planet, so what are we thinking? I mean, we can use any template here. I mean, there are some I do want to use, actually, um, which I've got in mind. When I did my last few videos of showing you all my custom objects, there were some planets I spotted, and I was like, I think we should use these at some point. So, yeah, there's definitely a few in here that I would I like, definitely like to bring in. So what about WASP-12b? That's a really, really large gas giant. So we could have a really, really dominant gas giant in this system. It's a larger star. There's going to be more material. So why don't we go with a really, really large object so press this one go in orbit okay so let's place our first gas giant in the system so i think i'll go around 36 au we're going to put wasp 12b in there so that's our first planet that has formed from the planetary disk so like jupiter was in theory the first planet to form in our solar system wasp 12b is going to be the first and probably the largest planet in here so here it is it's got 1.4 jupiter it's already a nice large object here it's got a nice set of band color on it so there is our dominant object it's 1.74 jupiters so if we compare it to the star itself i mean it's a fair fair size um, compared to the star there so good good so that is now in there. Oh, look at all that material is so cool. Right. So what's 12B? First gas giant. Okay, so what else are we thinking? We've got to have... Um, oh, we could try one of the banded ones. That could be quite cool. Which one, though? I mean, there's so many to choose from. Um, I don't want to go for anything that's a little, like, quite unrealistic in colour. I want to do try and... I do want to try and keep the gas giants fairly sort of realistic looking um, colour-wise. So we do have some other cool ones, actually. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Recently, I showed off the video... 
um, with all of these new materials. So why don't we have the methane gas giant in here, made by Mad Planet Guy? We could place one of those in here. I think that could be quite cool. Oh, all the materials coming back to the star again. Right, let's put the methane giant. We're going to have this spawning in the outer reaches. We're going to place the methane gas giant there. We've got the sulfur dioxide. We've also got nitrogen, helium. We could have a helium gas giant. Let's put that in there as well. Put the helium gas giant. Uh, I won't do carbon dioxide. We've also got some of his competition gas giants that look quite cool. So let's place one of those in as well. So we've got WAS-12B. Let's place the second competition object. Place it there. Why not? Uh, and then, um, we, did we use the helium? We did the helium and the methane. Why don't we put the nitrogen gas giant? We'll have that spawn on the outer reaches. So we've got some gas giants in here now. I do want to have some more, though. Because, obviously, this is only the early stage. Some of these could get ejected. Some of them may not get ejected. But we're going to see how this evolves and evolves. That's the whole point of these systems is they constantly change. Nothing stays the same. So I'm just going to throw in just a bunch of random stuff. I mean, this is a larger star, so we can have a lot of material just spawning in stuff here. So we can eventually see... Um, we'll do. We'll run it with the gas giants for a while before we start using a uh, spawning rockies in, because in theory, gas giants will um, appear before rockies in systems. So, what else are we thinking? I do want to use some ice giants. I think we've got to use the Eps, uh, uh, Epsilon Erdanis because they are some gorgeous-looking modded objects that you guys made. So, I'm going to place some ice giants further out in the system as well. So, we're going to place some there. So, I try and get a nicer uh, amount in. So. Maybe we could have one, uh, an ice giant that spawns a little... Or maybe we could have a hot a hot Neptune. So let's place one closer to the star, like sort of here. How about that? So some for some reason, that gas giant spawned there. So let's uh, let's see what else could we spawn. And uh, let's go with another regular sort of gas giant. So okay, we've got a nice bunch of gas giants in here now. Obviously, they're going to start picking up a lot of the material around this um, star. So let's just let it run for a bit. That is so cool looking. I mean, look at all this material. <laughs> we kind of sprayed it everywhere, and that is some of that is never going to be used. Some of that is just long gone. Is there a button to delete all escape and objects? That could be quite good. So those orbits are obviously going to change after a while. We can just keep an eye on here. It is very, very laggy. I mean, it's completely frozen. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is we've got our first planet sort of spawning here now. So is it going to run at all? No, I don't think it will. It's running super, super slow now. Wow. Right, so... Let's see here. So, yeah, I do want to... Yeah, let's just try and keep it running a little more. Can we go any faster? I mean, what we can do is try and delete all of this stuff out here. So, just to, uh, for lag purposes. Can we just go ahead and select all that? And just delete all of that? Yeah, there you go. So, we can just delete that uh, just by dragging and selecting stuff. So, again, let's just try and manually get rid of as much as possible. So, we're obviously, it's, it's obviously loading a lot of particles. And each of these particles has their own properties and stuff. So, obviously, after a while... With, all, with the hundreds and hundreds that are in here, that will start to uh, upset the uh, game performance. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead and delete um, a nice bunch of those just to get rid of them. So hopefully that will uh, run a little quicker now. I mean, yeah, there's still a huge, huge amount closer into the system. Let's just try and get rid of all of that as well. I mean, okay, let's just see how it runs now. Hopefully that will uh, make it behave a little more. Let's see, can we go any quicker? All right, really, really doesn't want to go. Remember, we still got all the asteroid particles in here as well. So, yeah, we'll have to uh, try and delete as many as possible here just try and go for a real real nice amount we could just do control d but i do want to keep the asteroid belt bit in there for the time being so okay there we go you know what let's just get rid of it there you go so the system's sp um, spawned in the planetary disc has been eaten up by the gas giants we can already see the gas giants are starting to bash into each other stuff is getting ejected i think one's gone already which one's that what orbit just got slingshotted out what was that okay so this gas giant already has been ejected. So straight out the box, a gas giant has gone. So, okay, right now. So now the particles are all gone. Let's just pretend they've all been consumed by the gas giants. But what we're going to do is I do want to add the ring back because I do want to keep this sort of planetary disc ring around. Obviously, the materials are a little bit of extra fun. But I do want to keep this ring sort of uh, chilling around um, here as well. So one, and let's go make it go out to, you know, what, 200. Make that a little extra interesting. So, okay, there's our ring. Okay, so I just press it once this time. We won't go crazy. So there's our planetary disk. There's still loads of protoplanets and stuff all being formed in the system here. We can already see that the gas giants are going to start interacting with each other here as well. Uh, let's quickly just give this uh, gas giant a trail. So there's one of the ice giants here looking good. So it's got a lot of bands, obviously. So uh, let's just give it a nice shade of blue. Good, good. Uh, the methane gas giant, that was the green one, wasn't it? So let's uh, do that. Oh, I just customized the color of it. Whoops. Um, we want to go back to default, please. Uh, it's interface I want to customize here. So there's the methane gas giant. Cool, cool. 
Uh, we've got the helium gas giant in here as well. That's obviously more of a uh, just a greyish coloured one. Okay, cool, cool. And I think the last one we had the nitrogen one, which is the bluish shade. So cool. So it's cool we've got all the other elements in here as well. So for extra sort of a uh, cool stuff, right? Good, good. Right now, rocky planets. I think we could start having some rocky planets start to form in the inner parts of the solar system now. So what sort of rocky planet should we have just appear? This would be quite cool. Right. What are we thinking? I do want to go for some quite exotic stuff. So, I mean, there were some cool rocky planets and stuff um, I had saved from some recent systems. So we could try using that. Let's, maybe, let's have Pascal in here. One of my good old customs. That's uh... Let's see if we um, we can get Pascal to sort of exist in this system. So let's place it there. Let's just I'm just going to place a, just a bunch of random rockies saved as well. Just see sort of where everything ends up. Because obviously the solar system is going to evolve after a while. Stuff will change. So we'll see how that works. Sulfur gas dwarf. Let's place one of those in as well. Like the sulfur gas dwarfs. Uh, where else? There were some really cool rocky planets I saved from some recent systems. I'm trying to find them. I mean, there's so many objects to go through here. So one of the desert objects maybe. Come on, I'm trying to find this one. I'm not sure where it is. There's a really, really cool one I saved recently. I'm just trying to work out where it is. No, oh, I want to find it, damn it. Where is it? I'm trying to look for it. Come on. Don't want to waste everyone's time. Me just looking through all the objects. Come on, where are we? I can't find it. There's too many objects for me to look through. <laughs> God, no. Oh, dear. Oh, well. I think it was Muir, actually. Hang on, let's place that in. I think this is the one I was thinking of. Let's place that closer into the uh, inner solar system area here. Okay, so was it was it Muir? I think it was. I think it was this one. Let's have a look. I want to say it was. I think it's been ruined by the current version of the game, though. I think it was that, yeah. Oh, wow, that has really been ruined. Right, so solar system there. Uh, let's go for one of the really, really exotic-looking hot planets as well, because I do like having those really cool ones close to the star like we had in the previous one. So what are we thinking? I go with one of the Venus-like objects, one of the bright objects. Let's place that close in there. So that's a, a dead, we'll place one of the desert worlds in as well. Let's put that there. So it's, obviously, it's very, very congested with planets and stuff. A lot of planetoids, early versions. Let's put another version of LP12 in. That's one of our. That was one of the coolest looking ones in the previous system. So let's place it. We're gonna place it there. We'll see how it works out. So we've got a very, very congested area. But yeah, my money is on it. A lot of these aren't gonna make it to the end of this series. So. I'm thinking one more rocky planet to uh, top things off, and then we'll place a few random sort of planetoid stuff in here as well. Stuff like Ceres and stuff. So, did we place a few tier in already? Let's place uh, place one over there then. So we can see very, very congested system now. And then lastly, we're just going to have a lot of random small moons, and these are just going to represent planets that never properly formed. So they're just going to be placed absolutely everywhere, because remember, it's a solar system, there's going to be tons and tons of objects all in here. So we're just going to see how this evolves now so i think we've got a rough a nice sort of example of a, an early solar system here that's just it's congested like crazy with objects but obviously not a lot of these are going to make it to the end of this a lot of them are going to get ejected there may be a collision yeah a lot of these probably won't make it so we're going to see now how this solar system evolves and we'll keep an eye on all the inner planets and see how warm they're all getting and remember one thing as well our star will evolve over time our star will get bigger and brighter so that will affect the system in the long run as well right so let's see how we are doing so proto spice so we got the current disc where are we uh no no that's not the one we want there we go so it's disc obviously it's very very dim it's a very very young star still it has a lot of mass but it's not uh properly very bright yet it's very very dim so it's going to take some time before it can start to uh, warm up some of the planets that have spawned in here. We can already see something's been ejected as well so we have lost this planet already so that's one of the um I think that was one of the desert planets. I'm not sure. But either way, it's gone. So it has to disappear. So that's been ejected, never coming back. So let's keep an eye on the orbits now. So we can see it's very, very... Most objects are fairly circular orbits at the moment. So it's very, very busy and congested in there. We can already see stuff is changing in that inner solar system. There's a lot of stuff to go around there. Remember, WASP-12b, this is probably going to be the most dominant object in here, as far as I know. Let's have a little line up of all the objects, actually. So see what we got. So we can see, um, oh, we can actually see it. Mad Planet Guys one here. This is actually a larger gas giant that's somehow formed in our solar system. See, that one and WASP-12b, they're going to be the two dominant objects by the looks of things. We've got this one as well. This one's two masses. Let's just go to mass. Okay, so this is our lineup of mass. We can see here. Okay, right now, here's a better indicator. So we can see the top three objects are these guys here. 
So there they all are. And then uh, the next uh, planet down is one of the ice giants. So this one is only 45 Earth. So yeah, the, the three biggest gas giants are Mars ahead of everything else. So they're the ones that have got the most material. So cool stuff there. Right. So let's head out. So they're the ones you're going to want to watch out for. So actually what we'll do as well, so we know they're the ones, the dominant ones, we will give them a custom paint spray so we know which ones are the troublemakers. So let's give, uh, we'll give Wasp a really menacing red. Why not? Um, and then the next one was, um, this quite, I can't even find it. There's too many in here. It was uh, this one, wasn't it? Comp, uh, Mad Planet Guy. That was the pink one. So we'll just give that a more enhanced shade so we know which one that one is. And then the last one was this one here. 51 Eerie B, wasn't it? I think. Was it this one? No, I don't want to shoot a laser. Uh, yeah, it was 51 Eerie. So we'll get again with this one. We'll give you just a brighter color there. So if we head out now, that'll be the yellow, the red, and the pink are the three dominant gas giants. And one thing to note, all of the dominant gas giants are very, very close proximity to each other. So that could end in disaster. <laughs> Something really bad could happen here. It looks like Wasp 12B actually has caught one of the random protoplanets in the system as well. We can see this object. It's completely pitch black here. There's no starlight here. Nothing. It hasn't fully... Uh, yeah, no starlight whatsoever. The star needs to evolve before starlight reaches this far out. So, right. Play. Let's see where we end up now. So go back to Spicer. And I think we can start to evolve Spicer a bit now. Our system has formed. So what are we thinking next? I think we need to open up the menu. Obviously, we'll save the simulation. We'll, co we'll continually save the simulation. I just called it BD1, which is birth and death. So we'll call it uh, BD2 now as we are starting to evolve it. Thank you very much. Right, let's let this uh, display. Right, okay, Spicer. So what we're going to do is you're going to get a little bigger. We're going to times it up so we can see immediately. I think that's a little too much, actually. So we can see, yeah, this this star, it's pretty crazy. So what are we thinking? Um, where are we? So, yeah, we want to make it bigger. I don't want to go, like, stupid crazy size. So we're going to make it brighter, obviously. So it's going to get... It's a, it's a star with more mass, remember. So it's going to burn through its hydrogen fuel a lot quicker than, say, the sun would. So let's split it up to one massive sun now. So it's already getting a little more, uh, more powerful than uh, our own sun. Because it's a lot more dangerous, there's a lot more mass in this star, so we can see how it behaves. It's already changed colour as well, as so it's getting brighter. So, let's see, so it's, yeah, one luminosity of sun. Remember, it's still got ten masses, though, so that thing is pretty deadly. Right, so let's have a little more, pay attention to the uh, system now, so let's see how everything behaves. Obviously, that asteroid belt should, in theory, start to disappear as all the planets have now formed. So the planetary disk can, can just vanish, so that will let our system run faster. Um, how are we doing now? It looks like some of the objects don't have a trail color. There's, L there's good old LP12. Look at it now in this version of the game. It looks completely different to the way it did before. So we'll, we'll have to get to customizing it um, at a later point though. So uh, we'll put that one as the yellow because we know we like that one. So right, there we go. So let's see how everything changes. Those gas giants are really going to hate each other being that close, I think. So let's see how everything behaves. Uh, slow things down. Look on the trails. So we can see some objects' orbits are already being interrupted. So, looking good. Oh, this is really cool. I'm really enjoying this already. So, let's just let it, let's just let it evolve for a bit. We can see some gas giant orbits already getting hurt. So, yeah, there, there's definitely stuff being interacted with in there. And those gas giants are eventually... I mean, if we run it, we'll just try and go really fast. Let this system really have time pass now. Let's just see how far we can go. Wow, that is crazy. Right, so... You can see the orbits are... There's a lot of stuff changing in there. I think something is just going to completely just get shot out eventually. So, how are we doing? Takes time for interactions to happen. So, pause. Look how many orbits are already non-circular now. That's pretty crazy. Um, how are we doing on the uh, inner solar system here? So, we can see that even, uh, even this far from the star... Yeah, not much temperature going on yet. So that's bright one. That's one of the that's that's a cool looking planet in this version of the game. It doesn't look as cool as it used to though. Uh, then we have our well, this is gonna be a hot Neptune once the star brightens up. So there's one of the Epsilons. Uh, next out was Narati over here. What has happened to this thing? Whoa, has it had a collision? My guess is something may have collided with this. I mean, I don't know if it's just the version of the game that's upset it, but. That looks like something smashed into it, I want to say. So, interesting. Very interesting indeed. It's got a red atmosphere. It's looking pretty cool. It's got city lights on it. Hey, look at that. Right. That is interesting. What is that collision all about? That's what I want to know. Uh, does it have water? It does have water. Hey. That's, it's all frozen at the moment. Yeah, that makes sense. So, cold. Very cold there. 
Uh, next out was LP12. So what's going on with you exactly? You're meant to be looking cooler than that. So here it is. So it still has its very iconic lights behind it. Obviously, we're going to switch those to the... Um, uh, where are you? Uh, city lights, city lights. Oh, where was the city light button? My blind. Atmosphere cloud. Ah, there we go. Cool, cool. Uh, so, yeah. There we go. So pull it back to how it should be. Right. Do I, did it have a purple atmosphere? I thought it had a yellow atmosphere. Let's see. Uh, atmosphere. I'm sure this was meant to be yellow. Oh, no, no. There definitely was um, that purpley shade, wasn't it? Let's pull it back to the way it was. So, okay. That's fine. Had the cool clouds. Wasn't the clouds meant to be... It'll make them yeah, more yellow. But the surface doesn't look as cool as it used to. So it's probably just because of the version of the game. I think it may be ice that made it look brighter. I mean, yeah, this thing is this thing is a very, really weird modded object now. So this is the current version of it. It does look very, very barren and wastelandy and volcanic. And doesn't look very friendly, does it? So, yeah, it, look, it looks a little cooler now. It's probably because the star isn't bright enough yet to make it glow. Because it looks cooler in the... It look, that's how it should look at the top there. Oh, it's meant them closer to how it looks so yeah, we'll leave lp12 to it uh how's pascal then this is supposed this is going to be an earth like world eventually so the star will have to heat up more for this thing to wake up you can see it's still very very dark here i mean there's yes yeah, getting you know the luminosity is not getting very far out uh how far are we from our star at the moment so we are currently 31 yes yeah, a 20 au so this is almost neptune distance and that star is only one luminosity of sun so yeah that's very very far away Here's Muir, the next bright planet out. Again, this will probably be an Earth-like world eventually, if it can warm up. So there's that one. Okay, so we won't go any further out than those. So that's how sort of... I'd, I'd probably say the inner solar system ends with Muir. And then once you get to the gas giant, uh, WASP-12b, that's where it's... I'd say that's probably the outer solar system beginning with WASP-12b there. So let's let it play, though. Let's keep it evolving. And let's see how stuff changes. Uh, why is Kepler-184f not moving? Has it got position lock on? What's going on here? Got to turn that off if that's the case. I don't want that. Yeah, get out of here, position lock. There we go. There you are. That's what it should be doing. I was wondering why it's just sitting there. <laughs> That's weird. Right, let's keep it going. So what we can do as well, obviously we'll throw another save in. So save, we'll keep it in save too. Okay. So Spicer, again, we're going to want to increase your luminosity now. Do want to get you brighter and bigger faster. So luminosity, uh, yeah, we'll keep increasing the radius. That's fine. So you can see the luminosity is going up. It's a yeah, it's getting way, way, way more. Oh my god, that is yeah. These stars are no joke. These high mass stars, they get bright fast, right? So yeah. So the, we'll get the zone into the bright area. So it's really, really uh, awoken. It's no longer a proto star. It's still a young version of Spicer, but yeah, we'll just call it young Spicer. It's not a proto Spicer anymore. So play. So obviously, bright one should start to receive some temperature. Yeah, we can see it's minus sixty degrees now. So as the average temperature. So this thing is going to start warming up. So that's what we want to see. So, and we can see Spicer's colours changing. It's a it's a mass, a star of more mass. It's hotter than the sun now. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. So, right, how are we doing now? So Spicer, yeah, getting brighter. How's the outer solar system doing here? Not much going on over here. We can see this is one of the random planetoids out here. Not really much going on there. Uh, the last gas shine, I think, is this one. The blue one. So there it is there. Okay. So they're, they're looking pretty comfortable now, but we can see this inner, the gap between the inner and the outer solar system is really getting upset. We can see Muir, one of the uh, possible Earth-like worlds, may have had its uh, hopes ruined by the gas giants upsetting its orbit. We can see Pascal's sitting okay at the moment, but Muir, yeah, Muir's not looking too good. And we can see it, the uh, helium gas giant, one of my planet guys, one, we can see that one's getting a little upset from it. Interesting stuff. And if we just turn off all the labels, we can still see... Remember that new feature I showed in the last video? Apparently this had been in the feet in the game for a while, some people said. But it wasn't an option I had switched on. But I think it's switched on by default now. So I mean, in theory, it's still a new thing. But yeah, it's cool to see all the objects just in the distance like that. Okay, so where are we? Let's go back to... Uh, we want the zone on, yeah. Right, cool. So we can see... Yeah, I, I think eventually some of these are just going to have it. They're going to go. So how are we looking? Remember the dangerous planets were the red, the yellow, and the pink. So yeah, it was uh, not LP12, it was Mad Planet Guy there, Wasp12B, and then 51, uh, and it's, it was the orange one, not the yellow one. So, okay. But yeah, those gas giants haven't, there's a lot of orbits being upset in there, and I think eventually, if we just really, really run this now, maximum speed, stuff is going to change. Come on. 
You can see your orbits are changing constantly. I think eventually some of these are just going to bounce off each other and just get out of here. As soon as that star gets larger as well, that could make some interesting scenarios. So, looking good. I mean, the outer solar system is fairly all right at the moment because of the way it's um, all formed. And I think there's, a lot of them are quite far distances away from each other. But I think one thing that could be very interesting here. And this is quite a wild card I'm going to play. We can see the methane gas chance has been affected. But I'm going to play a wild card. I'm going to use the um, button of shrink. I'm going to press it once. So it's going to make all the objects closer to each other. Actually, I'll do it a couple of times. So for some reason, all of the planets migrate inwards and we've seen this our own solar system a lot of the planets were theorized that they migrated inwards we're going to do it in this system as well just for a little extra fun so for some reason the entire system an unexplained reason the entire system migrated inwards so now the orbits are going to be closer to each other and stuff's obviously going to be closer to the star as well so those orbits are closer it's going to make stuff more interesting i think so let's just uh, play okay so a lot of the orbits are now going to have closer interactions. So this could really, really spice things up now. Because if we, so we were at Pascal earlier. Remember, Pascal is about 20 AU from the sun. But now it's 15. So that's a 5 AU jump closer to the star. Uh, how are we doing as well at Pascal? Have we got any sunlight? Yeah, it should be a little brighter here now with the star. Yeah, it's looking brighter. We can see the oceans are ready to melt. They are sitting there just dormant, waiting to be warmed up. So it's still very, very cold there. Um, how are we doing at uh, the next? So Muir is the other possible Earth-like world in here. Yeah, that's still very cold. Um, how are we doing in the inner solar system here? We got any temperature at bright one yet? Minus 24. It's getting warmer. Okay. Oh, God. We do not want to sit around that one. Okay, there you go. Right. So the system shrunk. That's really going to mess things up now, right? Oh, yeah. So let's let this really evolve. A lot of time going to pass. Why is it doing it in a million years? That's quite annoying. Why can't it say it in hundreds of years? I mean, I guess we can run it for a million years. <laughs> That'd be crazy. So, I'll just let that do its thing for the time being then. Can we open it a million more? Uh, is there any way we can turn it from million years to something else? I'm not sure. No. no. I don't think there is. I don't really play these settings much. Okay, we'll leave it. We'll leave it like that. But we can see. Look at the orbits now. A lot of stuff is being ruined. That, yeah, stuff's definitely getting ejected here. Remember, a lot of these aren't even planets. A lot of them are just tiny little planetoid moon objects that are just there for a little extra effect. So, yeah, look at that. That is looking hectic. It's great. That is looking really, really crazy. You can see some stuff is really getting pushed out now. So, let's just slow things down again. So, how are we doing? Okay, so Pascal's still sitting in there. It looks like WAS-12b has had a major interaction with something. Because look how far away it is now. That's not right. So it looks like it must have had an interaction with planet uh, Comp 1 Mad Planet Guy here, which is the largest. This is the most massive gas giant. So it's five masses of Jupiter. That's clearly had an interaction with Wastel B because Wastel B has migrated out like crazy there. Interesting. Uh, and then the other dominant gas giant was the orange one. So that's 51 only B. I want to say maybe that's had a change as well. So maybe because Comp Mad Planet Guy has pushed Wastel B outwards, maybe that's going to make the inner solar system a little more stable. For the time being possibly who knows right so um, again we'll go ahead and throw another save in uh, since the system has changed considerably we'll put it as save free now so there we go so let's keep it running i think we'll go up to save five before we finish today's episode so right star we're gonna make you bigger keep going start yeah it's getting brighter and brighter that luminosity is going really really large remember this is a star with 10 masses that it's getting a lot brighter and it's a blue star it's not just like a yellow star. This thing is a lot more luminous and powerful and dangerous. So, yeah, the surface temperature is now at 10K. So, pretty, pretty crazy stuff there. So, we can see the Hattable Zone is getting out. It's almost in Pascal's range now. So, that could, um, yeah, it's warming up. We can see it's, it's definitely warming up. So, we just saw some change. Oh, it's getting cold again now because it's all, look at its orbit. Its orbit gets closer and then outer again. So, it's got a slightly uh, eccentric orbit. Uh, inner solar system, bright one. I'm expecting some temperature. Yeah, you go. So, it's actually getting some temperature. So, this one is currently in the goods area. We can see it's warm up. It's a nice temperature. How are we looking on the surface? Is that oceans? Or is, is that, has it got ice on it? Let's see. I want to say that's ice, isn't it? Ooh. So maybe for a brief moment in this solar system's history, maybe the closest planet to the sun will have oceans uh, melt. Okay, so there we go. So we've melted it. So if we look underneath that atmosphere, it has oceans. Look at that. So the closest planet. It's looking pretty friendly. Um, underneath it's got a nice green... 
Um, we will just fade them out. That's a very... This is looking good. It's an Earth-like world currently. Look at that. Hey, I was not expecting this world to uh, have the properties. But all we had to do is press the melt button. Like, it should have melted anyway um, at its current temperature. So, yeah. It's got an Earth-like conditions. Um, at this point in the solar system... I mean, it's got a very crazy atmosphere. It makes it look a little different. So, it's also a, maybe more of a toxic-looking atmosphere. But underneath, it's got the um, sort of right sort of material and composition. So... It's got stats, got some decent stats going on for the closest planet to the sun, but obviously, closest planet to the sun, when that star gets brighter, it's not going to look too good for this thing. So, yeah, currently, Earth-like world, bright one, looking good. Uh, Epson, uh, Danny, that one's still cold, but I think once this, once we start to press play again, that's really going to warm up. So let's just uh, let it go. Let's uh, let resume where we were. Okay, cool. And I do want to keep tabs on bright one, see how hot it gets, so... Yeah, I'm quite impressed that that one's actually managed to uh, get itself sorted out. So we can see it's, it's half ocean, half land, by the way. It is. So half of it is all land, other half's all ocean. Quite a cool um, design there. So we can go do see it's a little glitchy with the ice and stuff, but we can just we can just turn all that snow and stuff off if we want. Uh, is it that one? There you go. So we can keep the ice on it, but the snow's a little glitchy. So there it is. So it's a green looking world, life on it at the moment, but I don't think that will last. We can see this object over here as well. This one's having quite a uh, inclined orbit. It's coming in and out. Let's look at it. Zoom around the star like that. If it has an interaction too close of a gas giant, it could just get completely deleted. So, not good. All right, let's uh, keep it rocking a little. Let's go faster. And actually, what we'll do, we'll let the simulation run. And we will increase the luminosity while the system is running. So you can see the star's getting older. It's getting brighter. Oh, yeah, that's a massive jump. Look at that. Right. So... It's now 1.77 suns, so it's getting more dangerous. Oh, what's that? Muir. Oh, no. That was one of the planets. This one was possibly built for Earth-like conditions, and it has been ruined. That is a shame. But there's nothing we can do about it. It's part of the natural evolution of the system. We haven't changed any orbit stats. We've just made... Oh, actually, you know, we did shrink it, but that was part down to a little bit of an unexplained reason. But, yeah, we haven't changed any of the other stats other than that. So... This object has been just shot out against our own will. So there's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. But yeah, this was a world that possibly had the potential for Earth-like conditions. I say this one and Pascal were like sister planets, because I think I designed the Pascal, the current Pascal, off this. Because this was a really, really gorgeous looking planet. It's all frozen at the moment, but I think it did have water. Yeah, it does have water on it, and it, it would have been able to support life if it had, had the temperature to do it. That's a shame. That is a real shame. I don't think it's going to be surviving. It may be ejected completely with that orbit now. That's a shame. That is a real, real shame. So, over there. That's one of the Earth-like worlds potentially ruined. How's Pascal doing? This is the only other hope for an Earth-like world in here. So, there it is there. Uh, and obviously, bright one Earth-like world currently. It's not going to last, though. Because, obviously, we made the star a lot brighter there. So, it's going to start changing the way this object acts. So, put the snow back on. But the snow's all melted anyway, so... Yeah, I'm not expecting much once that gets up. I mean, it's yeah, 19 degrees. Yeah, it's getting warmer. So it's not going to last long in the uh, it's moment in the sun. It's going to get too hot now. So how are we doing? Slow down a bit more. Yeah, that one orbits really fast. All right. How's LP12 doing as well? Good old LP12. Um, it's looking cool. It's still, uh, still um, very cold here, though. The star does need to get more powerful still. Okay, so, yeah, look at the orbits now. I mean, some of them have just been absolutely ruined. Uh, methane gas giant, not looking too good for you at the moment either. I don't know if that's picked up any material. No, it's still got zero and everything, so it's still 100% methane. Okay, let's uh, keep it going. Let's just go really, really fast. Just Let's just watch and just see what happens. We can just keep an eye on the outer orbits as well. I'll be very surprised if Muir out there, if that makes it to the end of this, because it is... Yeah, that orbit is... If it has too much gas giant interaction, it will either survive, maybe you get closer again, otherwise it will just get rejected, I guess. So, look how the orbits have changed. These were all circular at the beginning of this, and look at them now. Pretty much every single one has been changed. So, oh, wow, all right. I think nothing got ejected there, did it? Okay. Let's just keep it going. That's as fast as we can pretty much run it. So, yeah, we can see... Um, where are we now? So, let's uh, slow things down. So it looks like LP12, anything further out than LP12 has been affected quite drastically by the gas giants. We see Pascal as well, that one's had its orbit changed. Still has the potential to be warmed up. I think it still has potential to have some sort of ocean at some point if things keep going the way it goes. So what's going on there? Is it something melted? I'm not sure. 
think it's just the way there. It's just looking a little funny. Right. So there's that one. Back to bright. How's bright one doing? 30 degrees. It's warming up. It's probably uh, getting a little too warm sometimes now. That's its temperature. Right. Star. Getting a little brighter. And what we'll do is we'll save it as we're about to evolve the star again. We'll put this as save four. There we go. Okay. Right. So now we're going to uh, keep increasing. That is making that zone. Oh, the zone just completely vanished. Oh, no. Looks like, yeah, once you go to a certain size, it just skyrockets. Oh, my God. Right. Let's just try and keep it. Click it once. One more time. Yeah. Okay, so that's just made it just dangerously crazy. Now, so 38 luminosity. The zone is no point anymore. It won't even load. So, how are we doing? So, this is where stuff is really going to get hectic. Now, let's see the temperature on this one. It's probably going to keep going like crazy now. No, no, it's just it's surviving. Okay, interesting. How's our other planets doing? Uh, Epsilon, or what's this object in here? That one's, okay. LP12. No, it's still, still not warm enough yet, surprisingly. Okay, let's uh, keep things running. God, that is hectic. That is a really, really hectic system in there. <laughs> oh, man. It's still, um, still everything looking fairly all right, but a lot of objects are changing in that inner outer gap where the red orbit is. So that red, orange, and pink orbits are the ones that are having the biggest effect on stuff. See, the red and the pink are definitely having interactions with each other, and probably the orange one's getting involved there as well. You can see their orbits are changing when they get close to each other. So that's interesting. So I reckon one of those gas giants will be ejected, possibly, or there'll be a collision or something. So see how it all changes. So the inner solar system where Pascal and LP12 are, that seems fairly stable. But anything further out than that doesn't seem to be looking too good. I think the pink one, actually, that's the largest mass gas giant. I think that one will be all right, actually. Uh, how are we doing over here? We can see, yeah, that viewer, well, that's such a shame. That was an Earth-like possibly That had all the materials it needed to be an Earth-like, and it's been ruined. So let's uh, keep it rolling. Man, this is, this is really, really fun doing this, right? So let's uh, slow it down again. I think the star needs to evolve a bit more. Yep, let's do it. So it's getting bigger and bigger. Remember the original Spicer. How large is the original Spicer? So the original Spicer is currently seven masses of sun. So, yeah, we're not we're nowhere near... Um, or seven, yeah, seven radius of sun, sorry. So it's not exactly there yet. Still got a lot to go. So... Let's just keep it going. That luminosity is skyrocketing as this star gets bigger and older. So, yep, yeah, it's still young Spicer. We'll keep it young Spicer until it uh, gets to its current size. So we can see the surface temperature is getting ridiculous now. And that luminosity has drastically increased. Like, again, that zone button doesn't work now. So, I think bright one, I think it's going to be too inhabitable. Yeah, we can see straight away it's too hot. The star is too bright now. And any Earth-like conditions have been ruined on this world. So, if we look underneath now... Obviously, all that green. Yeah, I don't think it'll be looking green anymore. I think it'll be more of a Venus appearance. So, we're going to make it look like a Venus. So, something like that. This still has oceans. Yeah, get out of here. They don't, but they shouldn't be on there. So, there it is. So it's more of a Venus-like object now. Thick atmosphere. Not looking too good no more. Uh, how are we doing uh, further out? So, the hot Neptune. This is Epsilon. This should, in theory, be a hot Neptune now. Yeah, 150 degrees. Pascal, how are you doing? 122 degrees so maybe we boosted the star a little too much but we can see even though the star's a little too hot now we can still see it pascal has got its oceans it has oceans it is currently an earth like well it's quite warm but it has had its earth like i don't know what's going on there but it has got its earth like conditions on it at the moment so yes yeah, it's, it's looking all right how are we doing so it oh okay i see so it keeps its water because it goes further away from the star so it cools down. Because if it was orbiting too close, it would just all melt. But it looks like it can, at its furthest point there, goes through only 28 degrees. So yeah, it can, it can, it can oh, sustain its water. So this is at its colder position. Yeah. So yeah, Pascal. Earth-like conditions. And this is probably what Muir would have looked like if it had survived and stayed in the system um, currently. So there it is. It should have, it should have some lights on it. Where, where are our lights at? Can we get some lights? Uh, lights? Oh, they are on. Uh, always. There you go. Hey. So, Earth-like currently. But I don't think that's going to last so long on Pascal, unfortunately. Uh, where is Muir, anyway? Has it got any... 
I, I'm really not seeing. I mean, maybe when Muir gets close to the star, maybe it'll warm up briefly, but I'm not expecting it will will much. Uh, this object over here, this is the one that had a possible collision. Also got water on it at the moment. Probably not going to last on this one either. So that's Narati. Uh, bright one, Epsilon, we looked at. LP12, how are you doing? Oh, okay, it's looking, it's looking different than it was earlier. How are we? How are we? Okay. Yep, still looking uh, as menacing as always. Not as hot as it was in the uh, last system we did, though. So, yeah, so remember, it's not as close to the it's not as the closest pan to the sun like it was in the last one of these we did. So, right, let's keep it rolling. Right, so, where I want to keep an eye on this. I want to see when it comes close to the start if it has any sort of temperature increase. Maybe it maybe it warms up and maybe it melts briefly. Let's have a little look. Slow it down. So look at that temperature increase, right? So let's uh, watch it as it enters the system now. Let's actually go to its perspective as well. So it, it really, really flies in the system here. So let's see if it gets any temperature as it gets closer to the star. So how are we doing? Star's over there. Let, 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 let warm up. Any any temperature whatsoever? Or does it just not last around the star long enough? So we can see we are approaching. I think we're about to get to our closest point roughly. Yeah, this is the closest point it will get to the star. So you can see it is warming up. Does it get to zero degrees or does it get too far away again? No, it's getting colder. No, it just can't, it just can't do it yet. It's still too far away. So it just can't get to those Earth-like conditions like Pascal has. That's a shame. Oh, no, <laughs> it's all going out again. Right, okay, back to the uh, inner solar system. So bright one. Obviously, you're a Venus-like object now, looking very menacing. Right, so uh, back to Spicer. Let's uh, keep it going. Let things evolve a little more. But we can see the system is really, really uh, being upset now. So, orbits on, labels on, let's see where we go. Okay, come on. I'm very, I'm very impressed with how this has turned out. I hope you guys are enjoying this. And yeah, if you are, make sure to press that like button. Let's see if we can go for 50 likes onto this one, guys. Because, yeah, I think once we get to the red giant, or I say the red super giant phase of this system, I think it's going to be crazy. I mean, how large do you think Spicer will go? I mean, that is going to be... It's going to go a lot larger than the red giant sun will, and probably larger than the star we did in the previous one as well. So, this is going to be cool. Maybe maybe we can make it a hyper giant star, just to really, really make it crazy, but who knows? So, how are we doing now? So, all this is still looking... Oh! One of the ice giants has had a uh, considerable orbit change. I only just noticed it. I don't know how long it's been doing that. It looks like Kepler-184F, that one's had a orbit change as well. That was the one that was position locked earlier. That's an orbit change. Yeah, Epsilon Earth and EC over here. That really gorgeous looking one. That's uh, now been on the outer. It's been pushed out a bit. So interesting. So that's one of the gas giants. 34 masses of Earth there. Okay, right. So I think uh, we're going to do our final save for System 4. And I think we will do one more. We'll, yeah, like I said, we'll go to save five and then we will uh, leave it off there. So maybe we could do 15 stages of evolution maybe. So, okay, that's looking okay for the time being. We can see the orbits are all going all pretty hectic. Right, so back to Spicer itself. I think a little more buff to the radius. So obviously that luminosity is going to skyrocket more. So I think Pascal will be too inhospitable now. That's a, that's a considerable luminosity increase. So where are we, Pascal? 134, yeah, I think it's reached this point where it's not... Yeah, the water is evaporating, as you can see. It's not sticking around for long. We slow down the time. So where is it? It's just a little bit more eccentric than it was previously. So maybe it can still hold on to its water, but it's, yeah, it's still too hot for really anything now. Yeah, it doesn't really... Even at its coldest temperature, it still seems to be going. Uh, there it is there, so how cold does it go? Okay, so mine at 40... 38, because it goes to 38, which is still a little too warm, I'd say. I mean, yeah, the water won't evaporate, but that's still very, very warm. So, yeah, Pascal, that's not really hospitable anymore. Uh, where is Muir? Oh, Muir! Check it out! Muir has returned. It's not got an eccentric orbit anymore, has it? Oh, no, there's two! Did I put two in here by accident? There's a second. It's got a sister. Oh, my God. I never noticed that. I put two in here. Oh, no way! Two identical mirrors. How is science in this system going to explain two identical looking planets? <laughs> hey, look at that. So there's a second one. I was going to say, I mean, I was be, I'd be very surprised if it returned to a decent orbit. But you can see the original one. It's over there, but there's two of them in here. Oh, yeah. 
I only just noticed. How long's that been doing that? So there's two. There's maybe maybe Muir or one of the Muirs will get an Earth-like condition at some point. Interesting stuff indeed. Cool. So we can see that one is still not close enough though yet. So how are we doing over there? Uh, how's the uh, LP12 doing? I think that's going to be warming up now. Yeah, 130 degrees. I wish we could see the Hatable Zone, damn it. It's annoying how it just disappeared. Uh, Pascal, I mean, anything up to Pascal is obviously too hot. Uh, how are we doing at Comp 1? This is, in theory, the first outer gas giant here. So that one's getting some bit of temperature as well. Okay, but I think we will leave it off there for the time being, guys. So that is part one of evolving a custom solar system from birth to death. Look how eccentric the orbits have been got. This was, These were all flat disks earlier, all flat circular orbits. Look at them now. Look how that has evolved. That is awesome. It was 0 0.4 million years. I mean, we have passed a decent amount of time, but obviously we have boosted the star's progress. But yeah, that is a pretty extreme system we've got going on here. Obviously a lot larger than our own solar system in, in that regard. And yeah, bigger than the previous one of these we did as well. But yeah, that is, I guess, uh, Series 2 of evolving a custom solar system from birth to death. Um, yeah, Series 2, Episode 1. So what do you guys think of that? Uh, no, I want to save it as uh, number 5 now. Thank you. Okay, cool. So young Spicer, it's not so young now, but it's still younger than it is currently. So yeah, that is part one of evolving a custom solar system from birth to death, uh, season two. So yeah, let me know what you think are down below in the comments, guys. If I missed anything, let me know down below as well. But yeah, this is uh, turning out to be pretty interesting so far. So yeah, I look forward to doing the next one of these. But with that all said and done, guys, let's see him go for 50 likes on today's video if you enjoyed it. Yep, definitely make sure to press that like button. Also, subscribe. Help us on the journey to 21,000 subscribers, guys. So a massive thank you indeed for um, all the support recently. And yeah, really, really appreciate it, guys. But with that all said and done, make sure you all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.